right, so I'm finally ready to install the Takagawa 143 big bore kit into my 2019 Honda Monkey. Uh, in the last video, I did the fuel management system, the Dynojet Power Commander 5, and Wideband Commander 2. I'd been riding it around. Um, the settings that come from hard racing keep everything under an AFR of 14. Uh, under full throttle and then through the whole power band, everything's right around uh, 13 and 13 and a half. So should be safe now to get this installed and uh, start breaking it in. Again, the braking process apparently is like 300 miles or something. So there's a lot of boring riding ahead, but first thing to do is get this on and uh, just start cruising around on the bike. So looking at the bike, first things I need to do, take off the exhaust, the spark plug, my oil cooler. I'm gonna try to keep all the lines connected. Uh, obviously first is drain the oil and then the intake manifold assembly, try to pull that out of the way. Uh, then we're gonna take the cam cover off here, get the bike to top dead center, take the timing chain off. Then we should be able to pull the head off, then this main assembly off, take the piston off, and then put the new piston on, the new block on, and get it back together and try it out. I believe I have most of the things disconnected that I need to take off before I start removing the head here. Uh, before I take off the timing chain though, I need to get uh, the engine to top dead center, which uh, on the cam gear here, there's a little circle that you can see here next to my pinky, and then a little kind of indentation here um, at the nine o'clock position that needs to be lined up. At the same time here, you need to see a little T to show that everything is at top dead center. So using a 17 millimeter socket in this main hole. We're just gonna move the engine around. Spark plugs out so there's no compression. You can see here that the marks are lined up on the cam gear. And here you can see the letter T. So using the 17 millimeter ratchet on this side and a 12 millimeter on this side, I broke the nut loose, and then I'm gonna adjust it again to make sure that I'm back exactly at top dead center before I take it off. All right, 10 millimeter bolts to take out this, I believe it's a pulley guide wheel. There's two eight millimeter bolts securing the head. And now we're ready to take the four 12 millimeter uh, head bolts off and should be able to slip the whole assembly out. All right, heads off, the dowels came with it too. Uh, you can see the aluminum gasket was left here and the chain's hanging out. The piston looks pretty good. 
This now has uh, n about 900 miles on it. Here's what the valves look like on this side. Don't believe I'm reusing this gasket, but I'll pull it off carefully nonetheless. All right, we need to remove this OEM piston. There's a little a circle clip in here that you move around. There's a little indentation here that you can use a tool, like a really small screwdriver to pop out that clip. And then we should be able to pull out uh, the rod that holds uh, this piston uh, to the crankshaft here. All the videos that I've seen also recommend getting some paper towels in here, both to make sure that we don't put too much pressure on the arm here, but also to make sure that as we're pulling C-clips and other things, something doesn't accidentally pop into the engine because that would be a lot more work than we want to do on this. So we got the clip out here. All right, so here's the original piston. Came out pretty easily. This is the rod pin that goes through it. And this is the little C-clip that we had to pop out to take apart the assembly. All right, so before we get the new cylinder on the bike, I just wanted to show what they look like side by side. Uh, physically, other than being black, they look very similar, um, other than the diameter of the cylinder being a little bit uh, wider. And then here's the piston side by side. The diameter of the 143 being slightly uh, bigger than the OEM one, but otherwise not too significant of an appearance difference. So the kit comes with two new clips uh, that, are, that hold the connecting rod inside the piston. And it also comes with a new connecting rod. So we won't be reusing the clips or the connecting rod from the um, OEM one. So next step is to put in the piston rings, the maroon colored ring, with silver band is the top ring. Then the thick black ring goes in the middle groove, letters facing up. Both of them letters facing up. And then the two thin black rings go on the bottom groove with the oil ring in between them. So those would be these two and this then is the oil ring. All right, I played around with it for a bit. Uh, the hard racing instructions recommended using the bottom ring, then the middle oil ring, then the top ring, but I found putting the oil ring in first, uh, then the bottom, then the top, made it easier to get everything aligned. So uh, that then says that I should have 25 millimeters between um, the center and each side. I guess that's about 25 millimeters. I can space it out a little more. So 25 and 25, it's about five centimeters. And then you can see here in the instructions how it recommends um, the spacing of the bottom oil one and then all three sets of rings need to have 120 degrees of separation. So next, uh, I'll put the middle, the thick black ring goes in the middle groove, letters facing up. And then the maroon one on the top, also letters facing up. All right, and according to the directions here, uh, the in mark goes at the top of the cylinder. So um, that's going to be going in this orientation. So I'm gonna oil this up and also oil up the walls of the cylinder. I know you they recommend using assembly lube which I don't have, I'm gonna try just using regular oil for now. Um, get it in just far enough so that I can then push this whole cylinder uh, onto the four posts and then connect up the rod here. And actually I'm going to first put one of the, one of these two rings in so that I only need to put in the second one once it's uh, ready to be locked in place.
All right, that took some finagling, but I got uh, this side in. So again, I know you're supposed to use assembly lube here, but I'm gonna just first coat these walls in some of this 1040 motor oil. I also heard that you're not supposed to use synthetic during the breaking process. Can't exactly remember why, but I figure it doesn't hurt just to use regular dyno oil here. I also don't have a piston ring compressor, so I'm gonna see if I can't just nudge them in one at a time. All right, that actually seemed very easy. I'm gonna make sure that my timing's right. I've got in facing up. Okay, let's put this back on the bike. I pulled off the original gasket here, uh, cleaned it up, and got the new gasket that comes with the Takagawa kit. I also have the two uh, dowels replaced here on the rods on the left side. So I'm now gonna slip the cylinder back through here to the point that I get to the rod here so that I can put the connecting rod through get that last C-clip in position, and then close it up. All right, so that's all the way in, and I just need to get that last C-clip in place there. All right, I don't know if that was in the right focus, but I do have that ring in now. I'm gonna pull out the paper towel here carefully to try to not damage the new gasket. Make sure the dowels are lined up. Get the chain through. All right, and that looks pretty good. The in's facing up and the writing's the correct orientation. I'm gonna get this wheel back in and get the bolt through here and then start assembling things the same way that I remove them. But I think the bulk of this big bore kit installation is now complete. Just again, a matter of getting everything back in the order that it goes. Again, make sure you have the dowels in place and I've got the new gasket. Feed the chain through here. Put these back on. I also like to put a little bit of oil on these washers just so when I'm torquing them down, uh, they're, they're torquing down correctly and not uh, getting too much resistance and, and giving me a false torque rating. All right, so the installation's almost complete. The last things I need, I need to do is get the cam gear back on. And again, in doing so, I need to make sure that everything's at top dead center. Uh, before I do though, again, like my last install, I forgot to release the cam tensioner, so I'm gonna release it a little bit down here so that I'm able to get the gear on. 
uh, with the chain. Uh, once that's in though, it's just a matter of putting everything back together, torquing down to all the specified values, and this project should be finished. All right, that's good. All right, that's lined up. The dot now is aligned with the carrot. And you can still see the T for top dead center. So that's pretty much it. Uh, everything else is just putting everything back together. After the install, and actually after any of the installs that have to do with engine performance, make sure that you reset the ECU. Uh, to do that on the Monkey, it's pretty straightforward. If you take off the left side cover, there's this red plug here that you pop off. The green and blue wires you need to jump. Just a regular paper clip works for that. And then you hold the throttle wide open. Turn on the engine, not turning it over, but just the ignition on. Check engine light flashes. And you're good to go. All right, so moment of truth. I've got everything put back together, torqued down to spec. I've got the oil back in the engine. Uh, so should be good to go. Let's see what happens. Uh, break the engine in and tune it up. Thanks for watching.